my sad bag. My sad bag is sad. Oh, a sad girl. A sad girl. Okay, so this one, again, like the anger bag, and people have said, are you like the bag lady? <laughs> because I have a lot of bags. But they do provide containment, and it gives the child a place to go to, and it has tools. So I've pretty much, I created the anger bag, my sad bag, the stress bag, my out of control bag. <laughs> uh, so I just kind of went bag lady crazy. <laughs> but it, I realized it was working. Why stop? So with this, the same thing. You need a bag. Again, I talked about, you know, the color that I associate for sad is blue. So a blue bag, and it doesn't have to be this. You can get these for real cheap on orientaltrading.com. You can get like 10 of them for $12 or something. Or you can get a bag at the grocery store. Um, a tear pillow. Again, just a pillow case that the child's going to draw on, which will be their sad pillow. Paper to draw with crayons. Uh, what I've incorporated too, here's paper, is a small photo album, and we'll go through all of these. Uh, uh, one pack of Guatemalan worry dolls. This is optional, but does anyone know what Guatemalan worry dolls are? And I can show you how to make them. Yes. The ones that you put under your pillow. Yes. You tell them whatever. They're worry dolls. Yeah. In the legend in Guatemala is. They're little dolls, and if you, every night before you go to bed, if you tell them one worry and you put it under your pillow, the next morning all your worries will go away. I gave this to one girl, and one week, the next week I go and see her, and she was really mad at me. And I said, what did I do? And she said, those worry dolls didn't work. And I was like, oh boy, what do I do? You know, how do I, okay, the worry dolls didn't work. Because really, they're a crock of, you know, like they're really going to fix the worries. But my goal was to get her to express with her parent at night. Just express what the worry is, and then the parent would know what it was. So then I thought, okay, let me be creative out of the box. I said, I know, you need even bigger worry dolls. They're too small. And she's like, yeah. So we made bigger worry dolls. We just made out of cloth and little like paper um, uh, popsicle sticks and we wrapped them with yarn so you can make them. You just wrap them with yarn, different colored yarn, and put faces on them and then put them in a bag. And the child can tell a worry to each one because that's how they make them in Guatemala, pretty much. They just put yarn uh, thread around them and painted them. So bubbles for the sad bag, and index cards for sad busters. I have been also getting books for kids on what is sad, what is a sad feeling, or you're going to create an experience book. What do I do when I have feelings? What do I do when I have sad feelings? Like that book I had passed around, the Blue Day Book for that child, what they can do when they're feeling blue. You can give them a book, you can have them create their own books. And this child, this was a boy, he said take a walk, you take a picture of the child doing the intervention, take a walk, hug from mommy, snack break. Those were his three. And I like three, because I said that before, you're going to pick three interventions. Three is a nice assortment. It's not too much, it's not too little, and it's clear. We do three at a time. So we don't want to overwhelm them. Giving them 10 interventions, they're not going to be able to do it. So I'll show you this book, because you haven't seen this one, right? What do I do when I have feelings? And the child decorates it. Okay. So with this bag, again like the anger bag, we're going to tell the child, we're going to create a sad bag because we've noticed you're having a lot of sad feelings. And we're going to give you some things to do with your sad feelings. 
So the first thing would be the tear pillow. The tear pillow again is drawing a picture. I like clouds because why? This is a container and I tell the child the cloud is going to soak up your tears. So you can go here, you can cry, and the cloud will soak up your tears. And hold them. Again, a container, a place for the child to go to that's going to help hold them. You know, some kids in early, when they're adjusting to a new family, too much touch with the potential foster adoptive family is overwhelming. It's too much for them. They can't fully allow crying into a parent's arms. They can't do it. So we have to respect where they are emotionally and give them another opportunity to, yes, let out the feelings in a safe way so they don't feel threatened. Uh, so that's the sad pillow. The next is magical wish journal. Now something, what I was thinking when I thought about this is, in depression, we need hope. And when I think of wishes, it's a wish for hope. There's something I'm thinking of outside of this depression, out of this sadness. There's something better, like the, uh, the cloud. You know, there's, there's a silver lining behind every dark cloud. That that's what I'm helping kids understand. So I have them create a wish book. It's just a bunch of paper. And they can write wishes. So for this, and you'll be really surprised. Again, child's communicating, child's expressing. What is it that they wish for? I wish for a trip to Disneyland. They may be 12, and they've never been to Disneyland. Uh, I wish for a new doll, like the one I had in my foster family that disappeared when I moved, you know? Maybe the doll I received from my birth father on my last visit five years ago. That meant so much. We don't realize those are attachments too. I wish for a visit with my brother. It's really interesting what kids put in their wish books. Now this is an example for you today. I don't have an original because they're with the child right now. But I really like this tool too because it gives them hope. And then they can share them with their parent. And then the parent has an understanding what they're wishing for, too. And can possibly make it come true if they're able. We can't all go to Disneyland. It's pricey. <laughs> but we can go out for ice cream. Okay, so the next one is paper to draw. Again, it's paper for the child to draw their feelings, write words, thoughts, anything they're feeling about feeling sad. And the sad bag has a lot to do with the grief and loss of the separation, not only from maybe the previous foster home, but that birth family. Or the siblings I lived with, and then I haven't seen them because we're all in different homes. There's a lot of grief and loss for these kids, and we need to acknowledge and give them a place for it. A small photo album. What I do with this, and you can get these at the dollar store, and, you know, for clinicians and social workers, this expense does not come out of your pocket. It's we need to purchase these five items. You know, you present to the foster parent or the potential adoptive parent. You know, we're going to do this intervention. Can you provide me with? People have a lot of these things just sitting around the house. You know, so I know I'm asking a lot of you because this, you know, adds up financially. But you can always ask the parents to provide these because they are receiving monthly stipends for the child. Um, so coming down to the photo album, I wanted to create an album of pictures that the child could look at to self-soothe and nurture, things that they like. So a, a mermaid swimming in space. A dog makes me happy. We all need visualizations to transform our experiences. I'm not feeling so good. I'm going to go look at the sunset today, right? That's what I'm teaching kids. You can find things to nurture and give yourself what you need. You, there are opportunities. You can do this. You're not helpless. I think that that's the bottom line here. I'm teaching kids 
We may be feeling helpless, but we can help our helpless feelings feel better. A dog. My old preschool. This is a picture of a little boy, and I'll pass this around, who adopted an animal. He did an animal adoption. He was so proud. A baby face. Makes me happy. This little, I don't know what this is, chipmunk. Anything that a, a pig with little boots on. <laughs> you know, things that make a child laugh. A baby. Just some fun little things to instill, again, we want to transform that cortisol into oxytocin, the love hormone. Even our bad feelings, our hurt feelings, deserve love. And I don't even like the word bad. Even our hurt feelings deserve love and attention. So here you can. It's a cute assortment of pictures I pulled together. And you can pull pictures together too for the child if they don't know necessarily what makes them feel good. And then the Guatemalan worry dolls, which I explained before. Uh, bubbles, blow away, disappear technique. With bubbles and all of these interventions, once the child chooses three, they all have parameters. We only use the bubbles in the kitchen. They're not on the nice sofa in the living room. You know, there are rules around everything. And what I tell children is I want you to think of something you're sad about blow it into the bubble, and watch it disappear. What this is also doing is teaching them how to breathe. I want you to take a big, deep breath, blow it out, and watch the bubbles. Just watch stillness. They can pop them if they want, but it's, there's something calming and soothing watching bubbles. Just like watching you know, the leaves. It's called mindfulness. You're being mindful of the moment. You're slowing things down, taking your time, which a lot of these kids don't have that skill and are not taught that skill. They need it to be modeled, and they need it to be directed, taught. So I like bubbles a lot. Let it out. Take a big, deep breath in. Let it out. Teaching kids how to breathe is really good with bubbles. Okay, so the next thing are those sad busters, like the anger bag. And for this one, I made some big cards. You don't have to do this, but if you feel you want to, go ahead. Type up sad busters on one side and what the child does. Asking them first, before you give them your suggestions, because they're the experts, what do you think is a good sad buster for you? Let's think. When you have sad feelings, what do you need? Because every kid is different. There's no cookie cutter way. Ask my parent for a hug. They can tolerate closeness when they're sad. Go get my bubbles and blow three wishes into the air. Take deep breaths slowly. One, two, three, four, five. Say the tongue twister, silly Sally, sang dilly dally, sitting on a swing. Go to my mirror and make a funny face. Write my sad feelings in my journal. Cross my arms around my body and give myself a big, big hug. That's a good one. We all need self-compassion. You know what? What they've been through is a lot. You, you deserve to give yourself a hug. You've been working so hard. You've had so many people come in and out of your life. That must have been so hard for you. They need a lot of empathy for their experiences. A lot of validation that, yes, you're in pain. Yes, we understand. Yes, I get it. And that's why I'm providing you with this stuff. Because you need it. Um, cry on my tear pillow to catch my tears for me. So that's the sad busters. And then at the end, they pick three. They go in the bag, and the bag goes someplace special in the house. could be in the child's room. Wherever it's safe, because this isn't a toy, it's not played with, but it's practiced. So if sad feelings happened yesterday, let's write some of those. Let's draw a picture about the sad feelings you had yesterday. Because remember, in the moment, they're not going to be able to utilize this. It's the processing after or preparation for 
if you're anticipating they're going to encounter some grief and loss by seeing the birth family on a visit, which I see all the time. Um, so that's the sad bag.